So as I was explaining, you have four different type of fractures here, right? It's shown as A, B, C, and D. A and B are conjugate fractures. C indeed is extensional fractures, and D is releasing fractures. So, um, or C is opening fractures. So we are looking to, um, you know, set up different type of fracture. And the question is asking, what is the uh, Coulomb coefficient of this rock? Indeed, it's asking about mu. So if, um, let me first, I remind you what is the mu is. Indeed, the mu was um, tangent of psi is equal mu. And if you remember on the Mohr circle, you had a, uh, you know, let's say the fault, uh, your failing plane, and you had a, you know, a perpendicular to line to this line that we call as a, a Coulomb failure, right? And we said this line, okay, has an angle with horizon, and we call that one as a psi. And if you take the tangent of psi you're going to have the mu, indeed mu is the slope of this line, okay, slope of this column failure, slope of this line, okay. So, um, by knowing this, what I need, I need some information, okay, to draw my Mohr circle and come out with the, with the mu, come out with this. So let's see what kind of you know information we have. We don't have any you know value for sigma one and sigma three. That's okay because you can draw your you know more circle anywhere you want with any size you prefer. Okay, I'm gonna do this and call this one sigma one and call this one sigma three, and that's it. So um, next, what we need. We need theta angle, right? What is the theta angle? And so we, we have done a few problems right now and uh, today, and you, you know what's the theta, and need the theta is the angle between C3 and uh, failure planes. And sigma, and uh, let's say theta, it's always between zero to 90 degrees, okay? I will. I will let you know why I'm writing this one here um, because you might run into some kind of, you know, dots that which angle you should read. So I see a lot of, you know, uh, fractures, but for sure the one that is bisecting, um, the one that sigma 3 is bisecting is the conjugate fractures. So I will look at to these fractures. Okay, let me I just show which one I'm interested, right? The one that I'm just highlighting, those are the one that you should look at it. And we know the angle between sigma three, which is this one here, right? This is your sigma three. And if I draw a line here, you know, anywhere in the figure, right? This is part of the sigma three, right? So the angle between my lines and uh, and the failure planes are indeed our theta. So I can, rather than having one theta, now I can read several thetas, right? Let me show with the blue. Uh, there is one theta here, right? It's the angle between failure plane and sigma three. I'm gonna read this one rather than reading this one here, because I know theta is the angle which is changing from 0 to 90. So I will get rid of that, okay? This is not the one that you want. So I, I will read one theta here, another theta I will read here, right? Another theta I will read here, another one I will read it here, another one I will read it here, right? So another one I can read it here, you see? I can, so far I have one, two, three, four, five, and six, right? I can draw another uh, parallel line somewhere here. And as you see, I can read this angle as a theta, 
and this angle as a theta. Let's say so far you have like eight thetas, right? Take the average theta, take the average theta, and that is indeed is the one that we're gonna use. So when you have the average theta, what you can do, indeed, because this is engineering problem, okay, you know, civil engineers or is the, is the lab problem, you don't really, you know, laboratory problem, you don't really care about the right lateral or left lateral, because that only makes sense when you are in the field and your, you know, fault is oriented with respect to the north. But in the, in the, in the lab, you know, based on in which direction you're looking to the sample, the direction of the left lateral or right lateral, it's gonna change. So when you are in the lab environment, you forget about the right lateral or left lateral. Or you can say, I have a rule, I'm going to look at to my samples always from south to north, and I will do, you know, and I will take this rule for the entire process. So anyhow, you take the average theta, and that theta, you know, you should multiply it by two and show it as a two theta here, right? As, um, as I have, you know, as I measured here, uh, my angle it's coming um, about like 58 degrees. So for me, the average it's about 58 degrees, but for you it might be a little bit higher or lower. So if it's 58, two theta, it's gonna be 116, right? And here this angle is going to be 116 and you draw that one and you have these failure plane so far, okay? So when you have that one, what you're going to do, you know that your Coulomb failure, it's going to be perpendicular to the line. That it's, it's touching the circle and we, we call that one as a tangent line, right? You draw that line and this line is perpendicular to your failure plane that has an angle two theta on my circle. So you have this line here, and indeed this graph is scale-free. You can draw it in any scale you want, and it's not gonna affect on the angles. So I have my failure column, so you can measure this angle, which is psi, right? This is psi, and you know the mu, Okay, it's jumped psi. So the rest needs, you know, to, um, uh, to draw on the graph paper, and from there you can um, you can come up with the with the with the mu. I have a question. Let me see what's the question. How do you know to go clockwise or counterclockwise with two theta? Okay, so here, um, as I said to you. In this particular example, I'm assuming that I'm in the lab, and I know this is this is not going to be in the field, or um, that's why I would I would only work with the positive side. This is what the engineers does. Okay, they only work with the positive side. If you are a structural geologist, you may also consider the bottom side. Let's say if this is a lab environment, okay. You mix all the theta and you come up with the average because you want to put more information into uh, your calculation. If you are in the field, for some reason, let's say we are in the field, we are looking to you know one side of the of the valley, and we have this outcrop. In that case, I'm only gonna read those either they are left lateral or right lateral. So how you gonna do? How you, how you would know this is a right lateral or left lateral, I can show it in a few minutes. Let's I finish, let's I review one more time this in a lab environment and I go and I show you how you can be selective in the field. So here, again, I'm just repeating. If you are in the lab, you measure the angle of the failure plane and sigma three all of it with any direction and you take the average theta you multiply it by two and you take it to the more circle and you go from sigma one towards sigma three counterclockwise and uh, you know as much as two theta my theta here it was 58 the average theta 58 i multiply by two 116 i go 116 
and I draw my failure plane. I know the more Coulomb, it's going to be perpendicular my failure plane. You draw the perpendicular plane, and the slope of that plane, okay, or more Coulomb, it's going to be your mu, or it's going to be Coulomb coefficient. And Coulomb coefficient is equal tangent of the of the fair of the of the um, uh, Coulomb failure or in Coulomb envelope. You take the psi angle by using your protect protractor. You take the tangent and you come up with the mu, which is the Coulomb coefficient. This is what you do in the in the in the lab. And if you're gonna do in the field, okay, what what I do in the field. Indeed, either you are supposed to work with the positive side or negative side, right? And we said if it's positive side, this is left lateral. If you are working with the negative side, this is the right lateral. So right now, I need to find out which one of these fractures will, will act as a right lateral and which one it's going to act as a left lateral. There is a rule and always is like that. And indeed, the blocks here. Okay, I put some. I will put some arrows. Always the arrows. It's gonna go something like this. Okay, always the the, the top. Let's say the vector. Okay, it's facing towards towards the, um, the acute angle. Here it's moving like that. Here it's moving like that. Here it's moving opposite. Here it's moving opposite. You see, you're up moving that side. You see, these two are moving this side. You see, oh, the arrows everywhere are, are facing or you know showing the the acute angle. So you can indeed put these arrows like that. This is going that way. This is going this way. This is going this way. This is going that way, right? So right now you can actually select which one is left lateral and which one is right lateral. So it's very easy. Those that they are facing toward, let's say if this is north, this is west and this is east. Those that they are facing towards east, like this one and that one, okay? These are showing you the, the direction or the sense of the shear is right lateral. In that case, if you are going to work um, with the Morse circle, you only read the angle between these two red lines or these two failure planes with sigma 3, and you just take the average of these two and you plot it here and you say, okay, 2 theta, you go counterclockwise. If you are going to work only with these planes that they are facing towards west, right? These are three, and you can read the theta. And as you see here, okay, this one is moving that way. This is moving that way. This is a left lateral, and you have three of them. You can take, you know, an an edge, and you plot two theta here in the in the negative side. In both cases, these two thetas, okay, it's gonna be very similar. In that case, you can draw one line here and one line here two indeed column failures and then you read one side here and you read another side here okay so if you come up with the with the mu it's gonna be pretty much similar number if it's a little bit off what you can do you take the average okay by saying this indeed um we are um we are done with this, you know, uh, with this problem. Indeed, the idea here was how you distinguish theta angle. Okay, let me uh, clean this one. It is recorded. When you go back, you will see all of it. No worries about if I'm, you know, erasing it. So the, 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 the point of this problem, it was you read the theta angle, okay, um, from the figure. You take the average theta angle, right, and you know that you know the 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 Coulomb failure line that is. If you have your theta, you multiply by two two theta, and you actually want to go with this uh, Coulomb failure 
that is always is 90 degrees, right? This is a this is perpendicular to that. You want to know the slope of that, and the slope indeed is psi. You find the psi, and you say the mu indeed is tangent psi. Okay. The idea indeed was finding all these elements by looking to the uh, to the outcrop in the field or in the lab. Okay. So um, I will give you some time, make some notes, and then um, I will move on and work on problem uh, 40. Again, it's not very difficult. I will go through it, and you will have some time to work on it. And I think at the end of the next question, we will stop our class for today. And, um, and then from there, I will explain what we're going to do next time. Is there any question so far? If you want, you can actually post uh, or you can speak up. I can answer it right, right away. Okay, it seems we have no question on this. Um, let me I give you um, 12 minutes and I will come back at 5.45 and then we will work on the last question. 